Alright ladies and gentlemen, back in the shed today. Right next to me here, I have the Barra Rebuild. This is episode 3. So, at the moment, it's all done. So if you want to see how we got to that stage, as far as putting the oil pump on, the head studs, the head, all the timing gears, um, the timing chain assembly, as well as the new cams, all that sort of fun stuff, stay tuned, keep watching, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell button. I did start using a new camera, so I apologize for any auto focusing issues or any uh, sound quality issues, but I'm trying to sort of get some different types of shots and all that sort of stuff. So thank you very much for watching the intro and enjoy the rest of the episode. When fitting the oil pump, you want to slide the oil pump over the crank snout. You want to line up the flats of the gears and the flats of the snout of the crank. You might need to dress them and just do a little bit of clearance work to make them fit, but if you do that, just make sure you don't get any shavings inside the pump. Then you want to fit a new O-ring to the oil pump pickup. Then you can bolt it all up and torque it to spec. After torquing all the oil pump bolts to 10 Newton meters, it's time to flip the engine and install the head dowels into the block. After cleaning the threads in the block, it's time to fit the head studs. All good brands will come with fitting instructions to suit their studs. These are Dominator head studs and they require the threads to be greased with a supplied grease and installed hand tight only. With the head studs fitted, we use a clean tack rag and some brake cleaner and give the block one final clean before the head gasket's fitted. With the head now in place, it's time for the washers and the nuts. So here I'm fitting the oversized head stud washers. These are necessary under high boost application as the head can lift and crush the alloy into the smaller washers. So the larger washers uses more head surface to prevent this. You want to make sure that you use the assembly grease supplied and lubricate the stud, the threads, the washers and the nuts to ensure the correct torque setting is applied. Now that we're bolting the head down, these studs require 110 foot-pound in three passes. The first pass is 50 foot-pound, so the second is 75, the third and final pass is 110 foot-pound. Each pass is carried out in a star pattern as per the factory spec from the middle to the outside. 
and you may even notice that I go around and double check every single bolt once I'm finished. So you'll notice here there is quite a bit of force being put onto the torque wrench at the moment as well as the head studs themselves obviously. So I was using one foot on the engine stand as well as my knee on the block to try and support it. But just make sure that whatever is behind you is clear just in case one of these lets go because you will probably fall backwards. Now onto the cam side of things. I had to buy brand new cams direct from Ford as it was the best option for me considering my circumstances. When unwrapping the cams they actually were covered in metal dust that had rusted and one lobe even had surface rust on it, which was pretty piss poor to say the least. However when you're looking to identify which cam is the intake and the exhaust, look at the rear of the camshaft. There will be a cut behind the last lobe. If this cut is close to the lobe, it is an exhaust cam. If the cut is halfway from the rear lobe to the sensor area of the cam, it is an intake cam. Because of the surface rust and the dust, I gave them a quick wipe with a brand new tack rag and some WD-40 and then carefully clamped them in the vise so I could install the cam sprockets. Once the cam's placed in the vise carefully, it's onto the cam bolts. Now the stock bolts are torqued to yield, so I've opted for some new ones from Atomic Performance. Thank you very much guys. Now they recommend 85 Newton meters and triple two Loctite, which is the purple Loctite. I went for 85 Newton meters and the blue Loctite, so it should be sweet. When talking up the cam bolts, the cam started to spin inside the tack rag in the vise. I was watching for this so I caught it before any lobes hit the vise. I removed the tack rag, reclamped it and finished torquing them up. Just take good care to protect the machine surfaces so they don't get nicked or damaged. There we go. So that's one done. Got another one to do, and then we can chuck it in the head. Before the cams go back in the head, each roller rocker hole gets some assembly lube as well as each cam journal. This ensures everything is well lubricated before we start the engine for the very first time.
Now I'm just removing the rockers off of the valves, then I'm gonna put some assembly lube on top of each valve stem. All right, so the cams are now in. I'm gonna lube up all of these running surfaces and then I'm gonna put the cam caps on and we can start tightening them down. So everything's lubed up. I've put these on while they are dirty just so I knew which orientation they go because they only go on one way. So if you're not familiar, the way to decide which way they go is the intake side has a cut out of it, whereas the exhaust side has the indentation, but it doesn't have the cut out of it. And the rear two caps, I marked these all off before I took them off, but the rear two caps have the indentation or the cutaway, sorry. They have the cutaway at the back of the engine facing out of the block. So that's how you can remember which way they all go in. Uh, if you do change any of these, you will need to have these line board and they will need to be machined. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to, in the same sequence as you used to undo these, I'm going to do them all up two turns at a time. So I'm just gonna get them till they nip up. And then I'm gonna do two turns at a time, and I'm gonna do them front, the front plate as well as the back plate so it pulls the cam down evenly. Moving on to the timing chain assembly, move the cams to 12 o'clock so the timing marks are straight up. Now we start by fitting the fixed slide followed by the pivoting slide, then swing it out of the way to the side. Then line up the timing marks on the chain with the correct mark on the crank sprocket and slide the chain and sprocket as one onto the crank snout. Then keeping tension, run the chain up the fixed slide and around both cam shafts, making sure the cam timing marks line up with the correct chain links. Once this is done, you can swing the pivot slide back into place and fit the tensioner. Note that there are two sets of two marked links on the chain. The marks that are eight links apart are the top of the chain for the cam shafts. So you'll notice I have a bit of trouble fitting the crank sprocket here. Now I should have checked this first, but I didn't, and now it's bitten me in the ass. This isn't uncommon as they're supposed to be a nice tight fit on the crank. However, I did need to open up the keyway just by a fraction to allow it to slide on and off properly. Now it is still a nice snug fit, but I did have to remove a little material. You wanna be very careful though, because if you do remove too much material, the sprocket will become loose on the crank and that will end up shearing the key and you will throw your timing out and inevitably destroy the motor. So as I mentioned before, you want the chain to be nice and taut along the fixed slide between the crank and the cams. Now it's just sitting up the top of the cam, so I'm going to change that a fraction and you'll see the chain drop into place. Now it's on the sprocket properly, and now I'm going to flick the cam back a bit just to keep the tension, and then it's all set, ready for that slide and tensioner to be installed. Now when fitting this chain to the pivoting slide, you want to make sure the chain's sitting in the actual guide and not on the top of the lip. Then you want to start the tensioner by starting one bolt, then pushing against the tensioner and the pivoting slide, and then you can start the second bolt and get it all in place. 
Alright, so the pivot nut and the two tensioner bolts are all at 15 newton meters. So now I can pull that little pin out because it's not going to move until it gets oil pressure and until everything moves anyways. But what I'm going to do is now I'm going to put the crank bolt in. I'm going to double check all of my timing marks. And once I've double checked the timing marks, I'm going to give the engine one full crank rotation and make sure everything's still aligned. If you feel anything bind up or stop or it doesn't feel right, stop immediately and go back a fraction just to save any damage. Check out what you've done. So one full rotation of the camshafts, the crank will rotate twice, the cams will rotate once. So now, the cams should be pointing at 12 o'clock and the timing mark on the crank is straight down. So that should be golden. So now I can pull this pin out, let the tensioner do what it wants to do, which now it'll ratchet out like that. And you can see the tension is going in and out and it locks in place where it's happy. And then when the engine builds oil pressure, that'll also tension the chain up and pretty much hold it where it needs to be as well as the mechanical lock in here. All right, so we're up to stealing this front timing cover here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put a little bead of silicon on the outside of this dowel. And then I'm going to copy that for this side, and then we're going to put a bead of silicon across each one of these joins where the head meets the block. And then we're also going to put a bead of silicon on each side of the timing cover, and then we're going to place it onto the dowels and slide it home. So the timing cover's on, it's all torqued up. Each one of these is 28 Newton meters. I am a little disappointed being that some of the black has actually flaked off under the bolt, but it's together, I'm not repainting it. It looks good. It's still, it's an engine. It doesn't have to be perfect. So anyways, all right, so we've got the sump here. I'm gonna run a very small and quick bead of silicon. It doesn't even have to join all the way just up into this, uh, ridge here just to hold the gasket down. Once I've done that, I'm going to put the gasket in it, then we're going to flip it upside down and put it on the block. And we're going to silicon some certain spots on the block as well, which are known leaking points uh, if you don't seal them. So. Alright, so I've also got some carby cleaner and a rag. And I'm just going to go around all of this crank surface. These two sharp edges here, we, where I'm pointing, that is where you want to put some sealant. And then along the front here, where the timing cover meets the block, you also want to have a small bead of seal in there. Just so if there is any imperfections and it doesn't quite sit perfect, the sealant will take up that gap. Now it's worth noting with this sump gasket that it actually has a thick and a thin side. It is single directional only, but you can mess it up if you try hard enough, so I just thought I'd mention that. The thick side does go to the front of the engine. Alright, so here I've got Loctite 567. Now this is for the main cap bolts, so I'm going to put these 
in last because we want the sump to pull up to the block. So I'm going to take these out. Alright, now all I'm going to do, I'm just going to dab a tiny bit of sealant on each one of the threads of these bolts just for safe measure and then we're just going to plonk them all in and do them up. So all the little bolts are all torqued up to spec. So now we're just going to put a bit of thread sealant on each one of these and then we're going to torque these up to spec. And then these are torqued up to 58 newton meters. Again, a little bit of sealant where the timing cover meets the cylinder head. Alright ladies and gentlemen, as you can see, the engine is done. So as I said before, got some sick new merch. So I've got my jumper. So anyways, if you've enjoyed this series, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe. In the comments, drop what you would have done differently. And then if you have any suggestions for the ELXR6 that this is going into, let me know. Just keep in mind, it does have to pass engineering and pits assessment, all that sort of stuff. It's going to be fully road legal and registered in WA. So if you want to stick around for that, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the bell button to stay up to date. Video comes out pretty much every week, as well as some four wheel drive stuff. I've got actually some more Pajero Sport stuff coming up. So stay tuned for that as well. But anyways, thank you very much for watching. Thank you for all the people who have supported this Barra Build series. Thank you to Atomic Motorsports over East or Atomic Performance. You guys are awesome. Thank you very much to Dominator Motorsports for supplying some parts uh, as a sponsorship deal, as well as discounted other parts. Atomic, they gave me a very good discount on most parts. Thank you very much to Goldies for their support and helping the channel out. Thank you very much for Dark Horse Performance. Matt, you've been amazing, answering my calls, um, giving me a whole heap of info, all that sort of stuff. Woody at High Flow Engineering, thank you very much, mate. You're a legend. I uh, appreciate all the work you did for getting this thing ready for the build. So if I've missed anybody else, I'm sorry, but I am super thankful for literally everybody who has helped on this build, who's, even if it's from being supportive or giving me information, parts, whatever, super appreciative. Even the guys down at Repco helping me out. Um, just, yeah, cheers guys. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you all in the next episode and let's get this ELXR6 started. So we'll see you all very soon. Cheers guys.